Now we move on to gifting our own good deed. Number six now, sadaqah on behalf of the deceased. Aisha narrates, a man came to the Prophet sallallahu and said, my mother passed away suddenly and I feel if she had lived, she would have given some charity. Will she get the ajr if I give sadaqah on her behalf? And the Prophet said, yes. And the hadith is Sahih Bukhari. Sa'ad ibn Ubadah, his mother was an Ansariya lady. She embraced Islam and she died in the lifetime of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Sa'ad came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said, Ya Rasulallah, my mother passed away. And I wasn't here when she passed away. I was on a journey. If I give sadaqah on her behalf, will it benefit her? So the Prophet ﷺ said, yes. So Sa'ad said, I ask you to bear witness that I give my garden, al-mikhraf, as a charity in her name. Two birds with one stone. Sadaqa jariyah for the deceased. And the Prophet ﷺ explicitly allowed it. It appears Sa'ad loved his mother so much, he wasn't even satisfied with this. Because we have another hadith in Sunan Abi Dawud. That Sa'ad ibn Ubadah came back to the Prophet ﷺ and said, Ya Rasulullah, what is the best sadaqa that I can give for my mother? So the Prophet ﷺ said, a well of water. Sa'ad paid some money to dig a well and he said, this is the well for Umm Sa'ad. Number seven, Hajj and Umrah. Ibn Abbas said, hadith is in Bukhari, that a woman from the tribe of Juhayna came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said, my mother made a vow to Allah that she would perform Hajj and she passed away without fulfilling the nadhar. May I do Hajj on her behalf? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, let me ask you, if your mother left a debt would you not repay that debt? She said, yes. So he said, the debt of Allah has more right that you fulfill it back. Do a hajj on behalf of your mother. And the Prophet was saying, this is a debt owed to Allah. Okay, what if you fulfill the debt? Now you just want to pay extra. That's not explicit, but there's one narration that is used. And this is the famous one in Abu Dawood that when the Prophet was going for hajj, the Prophet ﷺ was wearing the ihram and a man wore the ihram and said, لَبَّيْكَ عَنْ شُبْرُمَ لَبَّيْكَ on behalf of Shubruma. The Prophet ﷺ said, who is Shubruma? The man said, he is a friend or a brother. The Prophet ﷺ asked asked this man, did you do hajj on behalf of yourself first? He said, no. So now the Prophet ﷺ said, an nafsik, thumma an Do hajj on your own behalf and then go ahead and do hajj on shubruma. Category 9, fasting. Aisha narrated that the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever dies and he had some fast that he had to still do, then his wali should fast on his behalf. And Amr ibn al-As said, Ya Rasulullah, my father al-As ibn Wa'il, before he died, he made another to Allah to sacrifice 100 camels. And my brother Hisham took half of that nadr and the other half is on me. Do I have to do the other 50? Interestingly enough, Hisham and Amr both accepted Islam and the father refused to the end and he did not accept Islam. And our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if only your father had accepted Tawheed, then if you had had fasted and given charity on his behalf, he would have benefited from that. Meaning what? There's no point. Because he didn't die as a Muslim. Now this hadith is quite explicit. Siyam is mentioned here. وَتَصَدَّقْتَ And this is not obligatory per se. It's just he said, I want to give a hundred camels. It would have benefited him. Now let's look at how our scholars of fiqh understood these ahadith. There is a spectrum of opinion when it comes to gifting the good deeds to the deceased and our madhahib. The Hanafi madhab from its beginning has said that any and all good deeds can be gifted to the deceased without any restrictions. In fact, most of them even said, why stop at deceased, give them to the living as well. Al-Kasani writes, it doesn't matter whether the one you gift a deed to is alive or dead, you may gift. And it doesn't matter whether you intend to gift before you do the deed, or you make up your mind after the deed has been done, and you decide after it's been done, I'm gonna give this deed to the dead. And the Hanafi madhab allows the gifting of any good deed, including salah. And of course, siyam and hajj, 
Hajj and Umrah and Qiraat al-Quran, anything and everything can be gifted to anyone else. What did Imam Malik and Imam Shafi'i say? Imam Shafi'i said, other than fulfilling the wajib, such as the guy didn't fast or whatnot, and sadaqa and dua and istighfar, four things. No deed benefits the dead and nothing reaches the dead. Imam Malik himself was on the same madhab as Shafi'i, no gifting. Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal was of the opinion of Imam Abu Hanifa. Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal allowed good deeds to be gifted to the deceased without any restrictions whatsoever. Ibn Qudama is the medieval icon of Hanbalism and he writes, any good deed that a person does and gives its thawab to a Muslim mayyit, Allah Azza wa Jal will benefit the mayyit because of it. Some ulama said that when you read Quran for the deceased, what the deceased gets is the barakah and the sakina and not the reward. Ibn Qudama says, no, that's not the case. Rather, the deceased gets the thawab. And then he says, and this is ijma' al-Muslimin. The unanimous actions of the Muslims in every era and in every land, they come together and they recite Quran and they give the thawab to their dead without anybody criticizing them. Now, what do you think Ibn Taymiyyah, Shaykh al-Islam said? And he's from the Hanbali school. Ibn Taymiyyah and his student Ibn al-Qayyim, they are very, very explicit that all good deeds can be gifted to the deceased. Ibn Taymiyyah writes, It is confirmed that the Prophet ﷺ allowed giving charity for the deceased and he allowed fasting for the deceased. And these evidences and others are used by Imam Ahmad and Abu Hanifa to allow gifting other deeds like the Salah and the Qira'at al-Quran to the deceased. However, Ibn Taymiyyah says, it should be known that it is not from the regular customs of the Sahaba and Tabi'un that every time they prayed or every time they read Quran or fast or did Hajj that they would gift their deeds to the deceased or even to their relatives. And indeed, the best method is to follow what the Salaf did. And Ibn Al-Qayyim basically says that out of all of these texts adding to one another, we can prove that the rewards of the good deeds reach the dead when a living person does it for him. And even common sense and qiyas, i.e. rationality proves this point. Why? Because he said, the reward of the good deed, who owns it? The one who has done it. So the one who has done it has the right to gift it to whomever he chooses. Just like in this dunya, if I have some money, don't I have the right to gift it to anybody? Then he mentions explicitly, as for reciting the Quran and gifting it to the deceased without paying, this will reach the dead just like fasting and hajj reaches the dead as well. And I have no problem. You want to say that reciting the Quran is not allowed? This is what Imam Shafi'i said. But don't make the other group mubtadir. Have your position, defend it, and then tolerate a position that goes back to the tabi'un taba tabi'un. That was and still remains a majority of the ummah to this day. I have to say this is the mistake. The mistake is not in the position you want to hold. The mistake is in not allowing another position to have a legitimacy to it. Because this is where we get fractions, fighting, infighting. We have enough problems outside the ummah to be worried about fighting over these issues inside the ummah. Live and let live when it comes to these inter issues and to finish off we've talked about the issue of gifting but do realize when you gift your good deeds to the deceased what you are doing is saying to Allah oh Allah I don't want this good deed anymore give it to somebody else do you go around giving all of your money to somebody else no matter how much you love somebody they'll take some of your money but you keep some for yourself and the more you love them the more you give but you also have rent to pay you also have yourself to take care of when you gift a good deed you are saying if this is the deed oh Allah I don't want it give it to my mother now no doubt you should gift to your mother your father your deceased go ahead whoever needs to be given but you also need a healthy dosage for yourself on Qiyam also you hope that Allah will give you for your generosity 